All right, so here we are working on my 1967 Eldorado. This car will be at Eyes on Design Father's Day in Gross Point, Michigan at the Edsel and Eleanor Ford house. And the car's in great shape. It's dusty. I got to wash it and clean it off. But I've been having this problem where it's starting to shift late and increasingly later. And this is a pretty typical problem on these old cars. And the first thing to do is check your vacuum line to make sure you don't have any splits going down to the transmission modulator valve. And this is, there's a little piece of vacuum hose there and then there's this line, this metal line that runs all the way down to the modulator valve on the transmission. And that's what controls the shift points on these turbo hydromatic 400s. So the first thing to do if you're having transmission shifting issues, especially on a low mileage car, is to check the modulator valve. And that's down, I'll show you where it is, it's down on the transmission, and this car's on the passenger side. This is a Turbo Hydromatic 425, but very similar for Turbo Hydromatic 400s and also other Turbo Hydromatics too. And you can see, I've already replaced it. Here's the old modulator valve. This is the old style, they don't make these anymore. The replacements are smaller, and you can get, I always recommend getting one with an adjustable set screw. From the factory, this one actually had an adjustable screw. You can see it there, but it was frozen in place. And a way to tell that these are bad is if you pull the vacuum hose off at the modulator valve and there's transmission fluid in the vacuum hose, that means the diaphragm inside is going bad, and that was the case here. So I knew that minimally this is starting to go bad, and it's part number 8623365. I couldn't find another one with that same part number, but I found one for a Turbo Hydromatic 400. And I got one that's a new old stock old style like this because I think they, they feel better, they shift a little better than the new, the new ones are smaller. So I'm gonna try that first. And you can see when you take the modulator valve out, you get a little bit of transmission fluid, depends on how fast you are swapping the new one and the old one out. Almost always the O-ring is stuck in the transmission, so you gotta pull that out, which I did before you put the new one in. It's just very typical, no big deal. Very easy job, and then you can adjust the shift points by turning the screw in or out. So if you're having a transmission problem, obviously check your fluid level. And if you're having a shift problem on these Turbo Hydromatic 400s, and you know most often these transmissions are bulletproof, this is the first thing you should check, is check the vacuum line, make sure that it's connected well, and then check the modulator valve itself. So that's what I have done. I'll show you where the modulator valve is on this car now so you can see it. All right, so now we're under the car and you can see actually the front suspension on these. There's the half shafts that drive the front wheels. This is a front wheel drive. You can see it has new stabilizer bushings in it. And then that's the torsion bar. There is no coil spring in there because they have to have clearance for the half shaft. So it has a torsion bar that mounts back there into a rubber mount and this cross member, and that's what provides the resistance as opposed to a coil spring up front. And that's true obviously on both sides of this Eldorado. And then you have clearly the starter here, old school GM starter. Look at the size of that half shaft. That is not a small half shaft. And then here is the modulator valve, the new one I just put on. You can see the adjustable screw it's held in, there's one bolt there with a clamp that holds it in place. Very, very easy to replace. Again, anticipate, you basically just take that bolt off and you twist the modulator valve back and forth a little bit and it pops right out. It's only held in place after you take that off by the O-ring. And you're gonna get transmission fluid that comes out, so just be prepared with a catch pan and to swap the new one in relatively quickly if possible so you don't lose all that much fluid. So this is what I recommend changing first. If you've checked that vacuum line and it's good, change the modulator valve. That's a key, key element of making these things shift correctly. And while you're under here, just do a visual inspection. This one, you know, looks just fine. Actually not dripping at all. This is the final drive. So this is what actually um, is, drives the half shafts. You can see this going out here to the half shaft and providing the output. Super beefy. They used this on the GMC motorhomes almost unaltered. Of course, it was the Oldsmobile division in the 
GMC motorhomes, so they use the Olds 455 or 403 for the later GMC motorhomes, as opposed to this Cadillac 429 that's in this car. But that's where you find the modulator valve on these front-wheel drive turbohydromatic 425 vehicles. So now we're going to test drive it and see if I have corrected the issue. And you can see the perimeter frame that on this car too that terminates at the rear leaf shackles, which is not a great idea. I think they tried to save money. There's the steering gear right there. Let's see if I can get it. The sun is unfortunately in the way. And that's about it. All right, let's go take it for a test drive. Engine's running. No leaks. Should be good to go. I love that this has a power steering cooler, by the way, for very sporty driving. That's the uh, rear level control. That's a high C juice can for all the vacuum on the car. There's another vacuum reservoir here. Okie doke. There we go. Okay, so a bit of an update. I did replace the modulator valve on the transmission and I started adjusting it. I adjusted about two and a half turns out to make the shifts later. And it still was shifting a little bit early. So the next thing to do is do a visual inspection. You actually should really start with this, of all the vacuum hoses. And this is the metal tube that goes down to the transmission to transmit vacuum. So this comes off of this port here and the only other thing on this is the brake booster. So there's nothing else on this vacuum line here. And the brake booster, I'm going to assume, is good. But I took a look at this vacuum hose, and well, here it is. You can see its original has the red stripe on it. And I touched it, and it basically broke in half. You can see somebody put a zip tie on it at some point earlier, knowing that probably it was creating a vacuum leak, but they should have just replaced the original hose. I mean, look at how, look at how cracked that is. So this was leaking a bunch of vacuum. Then put a new vacuum hose on here. Of course, put the new vacuum hose on. Then the car is shifting super early because that's where I'd adjusted the modulator valve. So I turned the modulator valve adjustment back in to the original specifications. And I turned it in maybe another half a turn because I like these cars to shift a little bit later than what they did stock. And now, silky smooth shifts. Perfect, runs perfect. So. More of the story, especially with these low mileage cars, is you rarely have a fundamental issue, but modulator valves, vacuum hoses can definitely affect the overall drivability of the car. Now it's all set.